Okay, this seems like it's the final video on the Bach Prelude from measure 33 to 36. If your copy only has 34 bars to it, you're missing a bar. And that's back at that section, that four bar section at 21. And it's very oftentimes the, the measure uh, 23 that's missing. <clears throat> Somebody goofed. So it should be 36 bars. Okay, with 33... Now, this is, this confounds theorists. That chord. Oddly. Oddly enough. Why is it? Because it's... That's the tonic. Now, the tonic is that. Not that. You got that... You got that outside of the key. That's not part of the C major scale. But I've mentioned before, on tonic it could be dominant, it could be dominant seventh, it could be dominant, it could be dominant with a uh, with a thirteenth, uh, anything, and that's that goes for any scale degree. Anything could be there. Now, normally. You've got certain chords that are normal to that particular scale degree. On the tonic, it's major. On the supertonic, it's minor. And we're talking about triads right now. In the median, it's minor. Subdominant and dominant are both major. The uh, leading, uh, the um, submedian is minor. The leading tone is diminished. Then back to major. Seventh chords, normal. Major seven, minor seven, minor seven, ma do, uh, major seven, dominant seven, then minor seven, then um, half diminished seven, because you got a major third up here, minor third, minor third, major third, diminished chord, and minor seventh, half diminished. You can alter any of those at will. Ooh, isn't that a nice one? That's a minor. Now, one thing about minors, you know, I'm going to cover that some other time. Where the piece that we have now, the composition is Bach, which is in C major. I will take up minor and minor scales and minor chords in due time. Once we have something to work with, a composition. Okay. Now, the dominant. Now, this is C dominant, which goes to F major. And of course, your theorists will say, this is not tonic, this is 5, 7 of 4. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4. And C does go to F. But not as a cadence or an ending of a piece, so that doesn't make any sense. It's just that, yeah, that is 5 to 4. But what happened to this as a tonic? It's not five, it's not, you know, five seven in, in, implies your normal dominant. But we're not on the or normal, no, we're on the normal major. We can alter it to make it dominant, but that doesn't say it's five of something else. It's, it's still tonic, no matter what. Now, your third measure, uh, 35, will be a dominant. So you have. Or the, uh, actually the um, 34th measure. Now, do you notice that there, you always have this, this uh, down here, which is your pedal. That's a supertonic over the pedal. Now, notice that you have the subdominant here. Now, with this passage on the uh, measure 34, do you want to call it an F major? I'm oh, sorry. That's the fifth, by the way, of F major. So when you add the 
D to it, it's no longer an F major chord, it's a D minor chord. However, you don't get that D minor, D minor, and that uh, note D minor, except on the fourth count. You know? I would suggest you keep it F major, D minor, and then after you get with D minor, then two, D minor goes to five, to one. I don't care how you figure it, whatever is convenient for you, what's easiest, what you can see quickly when you're playing the piece, up to you. Improvising on it. Okay, now we have first of all dominant on the tonic. Now, on a dominant is the same thing as the chord a major third and a minor seventh. Major third, minor seventh. Some people call that that uh, mixolydian on the tonic. I don't like those extra words. They confuse the issue. The issue is the characteristic intervals of the major third and the minor seventh, whether it's a chord or whether a scale. Then you've got the uh, on the um, 35th uh, 35th major. You've got the dominant with a B here, the major third over that pedal point. See, I didn't do exactly what was there, but this gives you a chance to know what the chords are, what the progressions are. was rather nice when it had nothing to do with Bach except for the progression. Do it some other way. How about uh, Something like that. Start with third in the bass, the third, the fifth, the minor, seventh. There's your diminished if you want to do this, but I think that's a little bit much at this very ending. until you're finished. What else can we do? Yeah. You see, you get a little bit wild about it, but don't forget your principle of improvisation is don't get to the triad, the notes of the triad, yet. Put in a leading tone into each of the chord tones. Now you could put in a leading tone going down. In a leading, um, upper tone, leading tone. To E, to C, to G, e, G. Something like that. And the other thing you can do is surround the main note. Or, but you're on the. See, 
that's attracted that little extra little thing there. What else can we do? F. Maybe that was a little bit too exotic. What you have to determine, is that what you want or is that not quite what you want? You'd probably avoid that after a while. Now, you've got to impro imp improvise enough that it sort of sinks in what you're doing. If you do it once or twice, you're just skimming the surface. And that will be gone forever and the learning will not be there. You want to do your improvisation enough that there's actual learning, that you can see these things. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you can get a little bit wild on it. How about here? Ooh, that's nice. I'm starting on the ninth chromatic gear, leading tone into E. Leaning up to F, the third of the... Now I did a chromatic leading tone in the bass. And do the same thing in your bass. Uh, so, uh, uh, let's do it. Tonic dominant to the subdominant to the to the dominant. And I forgot to do the get down to the D minor. Well let's see if we can do that. There's your suspended fourth. See, it was on the sub down to get down to that super tonic. But well, let's see if we can do it again. Something like that. Again, it's I couldn't duplicate that. This is pure improvisation. Anything. There's your C dominant. There's your C. There's your F. I like this ending here because I've got a fifth, then I've got another fifth. It just makes it rather than so terribly classical. We're living in today's times, but we're trying to do something that is a broke piece. So if you want to bring it up to today's sound, fine. If you don't, then keep your basic triads. Trying to get real fancy about it like that. See, I'm making different possibilities. I'm not saying 
This is the correct way to do it. That's not the correct way to do it. That's out. Work the possibilities and improvise and enjoy what you do and realize that some things you do is not going to be terribly, you know, terribly great. But once in a while you come across something that's just absolutely wonderful. Well, I'll see if you can remember that and duplicate it right away and remember what you did. And remember your, your, um, um, your tritones are the key to everything. Okay, what's that the tritone of? Well, I would say it's of uh, C dominant. C dominant. C can go to G dominant. C and then to C. Now once more. C C one five one. Once more. One, five. You can decorate that with so many things that are so attractive. But also, you've got to have a little bit of sensitivity in your fingers. You can't just do... not that wasn't very good to begin with but I was trying to Im imitate it just playing no play <laughs> not terribly good but at least I had a little bit of sensitivity in the fingers to play nicely to play musically I think that'll do it. Have fun, and don't forget, you don't have to do these one after another, but just choose one that's rather easy, and then go to that number 27, 21, excuse me, those bars at that measure 21, and then see if you can get that. So that you have the minor 9 of the supertonic, and then the, the minor 13th of the dominant, You know, there's not not to get off too much with that, but Christmas coming. Try it just for fun, and add that to your Christmas list as well as now. go to two keeping this you can do this I'd like to do that as a project also silent night as well as some of the Christmas songs we'll do that coming up in this fall another few months another thing I want to do is to start doing some popular pieces now you've got the key circle to work on and you should have a a piece that drills you on the key circle. Uh, I'll work on that for you very shortly. But right now, do these nine videos on the Bach Prelude and work them and understand them. Understand the function of every single note and the function of the chords and the function of the chord with missing root. And how do you find the missing root? And then the characteristic intervals. You see, all of this I'm, I'm talking about now is part of understanding the language of music and the language of Bach, who gave it to us. This is our Western tradition, starting with Bach. He is um, 
we owe him a tremendous round of gratitude for doing this for us. And his 48 preludes and fugues are just the greatest uh, and most amazing group of, of compositions that we have. So anyway, the um, Kleiner Preludium are also wonderful pieces, you know. You notice that pedal? Now I didn't use the proper arrangement, I mean the proper um, or, uh, or organization of that chord, but I got around it. That improvisation, and that's what it takes to be a musician, to when you get off of it, get back on it. But you can only do that by ear. And remember, playing by ear should be just as natural as driving your car by sight. Have a good one, and bye-bye.